Good morning, honorable members. Recording in progress. Uh, I hope I am. Good morning, Chair. Hey, waiter, 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 Chair, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Bang it, uh, make room, bang it, bang it. The, I think we are supposed to start our meeting. Uh, uh, hoping everybody is ready. Let me just give one or two minutes for everybody to, to be settle. Yes. Recording stopped. Thank you, honorable members. I think we all have to start now. Welcome. To Recording in progress. Everybody uh, from SCOM uh, and all the great. I think the professor that we have to all the of your board welcome to the public surprise uh, can you close the door yeah we also like to welcome the minister uh, uh, And of public Chair, your network is very bad. Extremely. <laughs> you keep on cutting. We can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, maybe I would have to say my better. I hope now I've already bought a the is it still bad, Professor? Yeah, we, we you keep on breaking, uh, uh, comrade chair. Okay. Let me again try another trick. Good morning, boss. Am I audible loud and clear? Somewhat. We are better, but we don't know as we proceed. Okay. Thank you, honorable members. Uh, members. I've already. Welcome everybody. Uh, all the, the, our meeting. Chair, 
Yeah, you are not I, from to better to rest. <laughs> Perhaps we should have someone with, uh, you should delegate to someone with better connectivity to chess until you get it fixed. Or even better, maybe delegate to the opposition to chair the meeting. Support it. <laughs> support it. Uh, support it. Support you it. So we. Thank you, President Wangwa. Hey, is that a, is that the beginning of a coalition? <laughs> okay, let me ask the Honorable Shabalala to take the meeting through while I'm still trying to sit better. I don't understand because this is where I normally okay, you you right, now, okay. right now it's very good. Now Jay, you're okay. Good. You're okay now. You can proceed, Chair. We can hear you. Okay, thank you. I was worried to give to Honorable Kwango because it's, her, it's his first meeting this year. Uh, welcome. Uh, uh, not this year. <laughs> This year, uh, that's not true. <laughs> it's records that speaks, it's not me. Uh, honorable members, After elections. Let, uh, let, let us see, hear from the department because we have wasted a lot of time already. I uh, just want to take us back that actually this meeting is taking place after we as members of the public enterprise made an oversight visit on the 23rd, 24th to both power stations that are in the process of being finished, according to our understanding, uh, Metopi and Kusile. And uh, we were to have a follow-up meeting with the ESCOM, where we were to be taken through about the maintenance plan, security of supply, and also accounting on the issue of the houses that were built near Kusile that seem to be abandoned and the, seem to be waste. We're all going to be getting that meeting before we had uh, another extended lockdown, including the extended, uh, 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 what do you call it, a constituency period, uh, which culminated also to the election and that became a very long period and we were unable to get all those uh, plans we had with ESCOM. Therefore, I think in their presentation, they will have to bump to those issues that were outstanding, we still have to engage uh, when, we were met, when we met with them. Uh, our oversight was a very important and uh, helped us actually to understand uh, what was happening in those power stations. We also came there highly motivated with the finishing uh, of Metupi uh, with all units that were ready for commissioning and also uh, Kusile, a couple of, many of the, 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 the units were also in the process of being finalized. We were given an undertaking that come June, July next year, uh, load shedding and all those problems will be history. Um, however, we are where we are now. And in this presentation, it was gonna supposed to help us to get clarity and be put on the same wavelength with them to understand what is taking place there. Uh, before I continue saying a lot of things, because members are here, will be engaging, we will have to ask the minister, uh, the shareholder, to provide us with an overview uh, before he give to ESCOM to, to, to take us through. Uh, Honorable Minister, welcome, and please uh, take the podium. Uh, good morning, Chair, and good morning, 
uh, honorable members and everybody else that has joined and uh, to the acting chair and uh, board members that are also uh, part of this meeting. I, I don't want to take too much of time because I think what you want to do is to hear directly from uh, Eskom. It's safe to say I've been told that the CEO is at a press conference. As soon as he finishes his briefing, he will join. And I'm sure the chair of the board will then uh, also, uh, subsequent to my introductory remarks, uh, add his introductory remarks as well. As far as the overview is concerned, uh, Chair, uh, I think you are, you are right that uh, each time uh, we seem to hear from ESCOM uh, management and board, that uh, the load sharing issues would be dealt with, which actually means that the units, both uh, coal, nuclear on the one hand, and then hydro and water and diesel on the other hand, uh, will be reasonably operational. And uh, as a consequence, the demand uh, for energy uh, at various stages during the lockdown <clears throat> and during the COVID pandemic as it uh, struck South Africa and indeed the rest of the world, but we're talking about South Africa here, um, that ESCOM's uh, output would be able to cope with the requirements uh, that we actually have. Uh, however, a number of factors have uh, uh, intervened and have not been adequately dealt with, sometimes through circumstance and at other times through the human factor. So as far as circumstance is concerned, the pandemic, uh, particularly the lockdowns last year, uh, did impact on the uh, maintenance um, routine and intentions that uh, ESCOM had. And uh, part of that plan, as you've heard on many occasions, was to overcome the legacy of poor maintenance and hard driving of the plant during the period of state capture. And uh, as a consequence, uh, mid mid uh, midlife refurbishment, as it is called, had to be undertaken, but then that was disrupted. That also gets disrupted because of the poor response time uh, from the procurement office in the Treasury to some of the requirements uh, that we have uh, put to it uh, by ESCOM uh, when there's inordinate delays uh, in uh, responding to uh, procurement requirements with ESCOM can cover that ground. And uh, those that were responsible for, in fact, uh, creating the current situation uh, historically, uh, I must mention, are now on a rehabilitation campaign, which also must be taken note of. And there might be consequences uh, for ESCOM operations in that particular regard. Uh, but a long time ago, Chair, you recall that uh, it was said both by the ESCOM management and at their behest by ourselves that we require uh, extra megawatts in the system to allow for that maintenance to actually occur. That uh, what, and, and of course, for the record, uh, there, there hasn't been any made available. Uh, but at the same time, ESCOM has not improved substantially the energy availability factor, uh, which still sits at around 65%. And uh, that's also part of the challenge. Um, and that can be attributable to plant on the one hand, but increasingly it's clear to the board uh, that the issue of the work ethic and culture within the organization is in serious need of attention. Um, 
there is still too much of a tendency to engage in corrupt activities on the one hand, but also negligent activities on the other hand. Um, and that is accompanied by good people who don't have adequate experience, I'm told. And uh, various efforts are now being made to complement uh, the existing management as well. Let it also be said that uh, many of the senior managers have taken a huge amount of strain in this period, which is understandable. And uh, these are ordinary human beings just like us, um, who, some of whom are resilient enough to uh, cope with the stress and others are not resilient enough to cope with the stress but the chair can go into, into some of those. There's also question marks that need to be raised around the contractors uh, who undertake some of the maintenance work and whether all of them perform uh, the quality of maintenance that is actually required uh, at, at various stages. But once we have some technical people on the call and you might have them already, I think it's important for the committee and the public that might be listening in to also understand uh, and get a better appreciation of the complexities that need to be uh, dealt with um, in uh, a power plant. And uh, that, that, that has to uh, do with understanding better what is a trip, what is a boiler tube leak, how long does it... Uh, you might remember we've given you illustrations of uh, the complex uh, machinery, if you like, that is at a power station. But uh, attending to breakdown uh, in, in some of these instances is far more complex than just putting in a new pipe somewhere. And uh, that complexity, if it is better appreciated and perhaps even better communicated, uh, needs to uh, give rise to a better appreciation of the time taken uh, to get some of the maintenance work uh, done as well. My last point here would be that the policy shift in government uh, in respect of a less complex, uh, less red tape orientated 100 megawatt uh, plant establishment as far as renewables are concerned uh, is likely to make quite a big difference in the short term. And uh, uh, that would certainly add megawatts to the system on the one hand, but on the other hand, it won't happen overnight. Uh, there's a gap of between 12 and 18 months uh, that we still have to cope with. And that's the uh, reality or context in which uh, improvements in other areas of system performance uh, need, to, need to be undertaken. The current management crew had little to do with uh, the development of Medupi and Kusile and the mistakes that happened uh, in that process. Uh, but like all of us, we have to take responsibility and we can't just say somebody else did it and uh, make the best of what is available to us. Uh, but these are long-term projects that have long-term consequences, uh, both for ESCOM and for the country as a whole. And the sooner we resolve some of these issues, both in uh, uh, ESCOM's operations, but also in the wider uh, context, the sooner we will be able to give the country the assurance that there's an adequate supply of electricity available which must be uh, the goal uh, that we are all uh, working towards. I did say at some stage uh, in this process over the last couple of uh, months, I think, 
that the energy issue shouldn't be turned into a political football. And uh, regrettably, uh, that wasn't the case. Elections inspire uh, all sorts of uh, uh, responses, uh, but we are back to square one in a sense, where we have to deal with the realities that uh, are operational or uh, that exist within the Eastern context. And uh, let me encourage the board and the management to uh, give you as much information as you can possibly absorb at this uh, meeting. Uh, but on the understanding that they, they, on the one hand, there is a plan, but on the other hand, that's going to take time uh, to put into operation. So, Chair, uh, with a very uh, broad overview, if, with your consent, can we request the Chair to come in um, and make his remarks, and then the management team uh, can respond uh, with greater specificity on some of the issues that you raised, both in respect of the financials, but also in relation to load sharing. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Uh, Professor? Professor Mokoba? The chair of the board. Is he still on the platform? Seems to have dropped off, Chair. Um, okay. I'm not sure if any other board member would like to take over while the prof tries to reconnect. Or can you call on the prof to do so? I think it's coming back, Chair. Okay. Professor, can you come in? Professor Mokoba? His mic uh, is on. I think he's having some connection problem. I will suggest any other board member. I don't understand. Talk to us, Professor. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Oh, okay. I think uh, my my internet uh, kept on telling me that the 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 internet uh, connectivity is poor. But let me take the opportunity to thank the honourable members and yourself, uh, Chair, and the honourable Minister, uh, on this uh, presentation that we are requested to provide. I think to the a portfolio committee. I just wanted to make a couple of points. I will not repeat what the minister has said, although the line was a little bit broken, that as the board of ESCOM, we believe that we do have a plan uh, in order to deal with the challenges that uh, as an organization we face on behalf of the country. And we are very much mindful of the role I think that uh, ESCOM has to play, I think, in the well-being of South Africans and in the economic development of our own country. We have identified maybe three issues. Uh, I think the minister has touched on them. The first one is, is skills. Uh, the other one is really uh, uh, this uh, reliability maintenance that we have to undertake. But the third one is what the minister mentioned, that the culture uh, at ESCOM, I think, needs uh, addressing and it needs to change as we are unbundling ESCOM at the moment. And that's something that we as the board have focused upon. Uh, those are the three issues I want to put on the table. 
but uh, we are determined, I think, uh, like all South Africans, I think we are never happy and never pleased, I think, to see what we're seeing or to experience what we're experiencing. But together with the current management, I think we believe that we have a plan that requires time, that requires resources, and that requires all of us, I think, to be coordinated in what we do. Uh, for example, I know Andre has mentioned the fact that sometimes we make requests to National Treasury and it takes about three months or two months to get responses and those delay some of the processes, but these are things that can be ironed as we go along. Now, just for uh, to report and put matters on the record, I have been double booked today because I'm supposed to give uh, my report as the health ombud to the health portfolio committee, which started at nine, but I requested time that I participate in this uh, portfolio committee uh, uh, on enterprises so that I can share my thoughts, I think with ESCOM up until 12 o'clock. And also I've been told that Andre is at, uh, having a press conference and he should join us any minute now but in the meantime, I think uh, Mr. Caleb Kasim will be the conductor of the ESCOM orchestra as we deliver, I think, what were required by the portfolio committee. I want to thank you. And if there are any issues, uh, can they be raised before 12 o'clock so that I, I can depart and join the health portfolio committee and give my report again uh, to parliament on what I do as the health ombud. Thank you, Chair, and uh, I look forward to an interesting and an insightful meeting from uh, the honorable members. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Mkhoba. Uh, ESCOM can, the person who will be doing the presentation, uh, Mr. Hasim, can yes. you come in? Uh, thank, th you. thank you, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members. Uh, if we can just put up the presentation, uh, Natasha, and I'll commence. Thank you. Thank you. You can move on and, and presentation move. Tasha, we can move the slides, thank you. Um, Tasha, the slides are not moving. Apologies, Chair and members. Okay, yeah, next slide. Thank you. Uh, um, morning members, uh, uh, the, the last uh, financial year in, uh, ended March 21 was quite difficult. Uh, obviously as the minister and all of us are aware, it was on the back of COVID-19 pandemic. This has resulted in a drop in sales volumes of 6.7%. Uh, and in terms of our financial results, we posted a net loss after tax of 18.9 billion. Uh, on the positive side, with the support from government 56 billion received during that year, we were able to reduce our gross debt uh, that was owing by 81.9 billion rand during the year. And as indicated by the minister, as well as the chairman, and we all well aware of the challenges that are facing us in the generation environment, uh, the EAF being uh, uh, settled at uh, just under 65% as at March, 2021. Uh, uh, on, on the network side, performance was much more uh, positive and did improve year on year. Environmental challenges remain a concern, in particular with regard to the Kendall power stations and its uh, emissions. Um, 
Uh, obviously, one of our key deliverables as ESCOM is preparing the organization uh, for the legal separation into transmission, distribution, and generation. As at the end of June 2021, we've completed uh, the functional separation internally within the organization. If we move on, Natasha, thank you. Um, Honorable Chair, you, you mentioned the importance of your site visits at Madupi. Yes, it, it, it is correct that um, um, we will manage to complete all the units with unit one coming into commercial operation on the 31st of July, 2021. Uh, however, unfortunately, we are aware of the unit four explosion that occurred um, in August last year. And, and that unit will take over 12 months to bring back onto the grid. Investigations are still undergoing with regard to unit four. On the positive side, there were no injuries uh, or fatalities sustained. Uh, on Kusile, uh, we were also able to bring in unit two and unit three during the financial year. I think it's important to appreciate that Mintupi still requires uh, flu gas sulfurization to be fitted, which is um, estimated to come at a cost of 38.4 billion rand, whilst Kusile is uh, constructed with FT FTD already included. Uh, Chairperson and honorable members, uh, we are addressing the defects at both these stations uh, to uh, get the performance more towards the design level uh, uh, activities. We move on to the next slide, thank you. Uh, with regard to the COVID implications, uh, yeah, well, we've seen that uh, the, the peak was impacted anything between 7,500 megawatts to up to 11,000 megawatts, depending on the level of lockdown during the year. Uh, obviously, it did impact on generation performance. We have managed to do some uh, uh, minimal maintenance during this period, but as indicated by the minister, we could not uh, undertake long-term uh, maintenance uh, during this period due to implications in terms of securing necessary contractors as well as spares Simultaneously, uh, I think in terms of the numbers uh, from an ESCOM perspective, in terms of how has COVID impacted on the staff, uh, just under 7,000 cases uh, during the financial year, uh, split between uh, ESCOM employees and contractors, uh, 6,140 uh, recoveries. Sadly, uh, COVID has... Uh, uh, resulted in 128 employees and 17 contractors succumbing to the pandemic. Uh, and as I've explained that we have seen a reduction uh, in terms of our sales volumes. We move on to the next slide. From a strategy perspective, uh, in terms of industry uh, trends, I think the big one is obviously the decarbonization and moving towards greener technologies and addressing those challenges. Uh, decentralization and that separation that we're currently undertaking. And then we need to make sure we make use of digitalization and the fourth industrial revolution um, to improve our processes and uh, which will also contribute to better controls going forward not only from an operational perspective, but more importantly, we see great opportunities in our procurement and supply chain management environment. Uh, in, in terms of the just energy transition, uh, as the older stations come towards the end of their lives, we would like to uh, focus on repurposing and repowering them to ensure not only the megawatts that are required for the system and the country, but more importantly, to ensure those economies uh, that surround these power stations continue 
from a country perspective. Uh, in terms of our financial outlook, obviously uh, we need to strengthen the balance sheet, improve our performance in terms of the income statement. And as our chairman has touched on, the importance of people and culture is a key focus. It's been monitored uh, from executive management as well as board. Uh, next slide, thank you. Uh, yeah, that's just a breakdown of the executive team. I think we can skip this. Most of the positions uh, have now been appointed. We just have an acting uh, CPO. We have appointed uh, our new head of legal as well recently. In terms of uh, on a high level, in terms of our financial performance, uh, on the back of the reduced volume COVID, overall revenue has increased here. 8.76%. That comes on the back of a tariff increase of 50%, obviously used by the, uh, the volume reduction. Uh, we have received uh, uh, some favorable court judgments in terms of our reviews of recent NASA decisions. Some have been implemented and some are still sitting with the courts and the court processes. From an ESCOM perspective, we acknowledge that we need to be efficient and extract savings to, to minimize the impact on, on the consumers. We did achieve our target of 14.1 billion during the last financial year. Our members, uh, our We've lost you. We have lost the present the presenter. Uh, Mr. Kasim. On the day when I sacrificed the chief whip's chair for this meeting, we unfortunately have technical issues. Eh? <laughs> Um, is there anybody who can take us through while Mr. Kasim is experiencing some technical problems? Yeah, there must be something central because all of us are affected by these technical problems. You had one, I had one, Khalib is having one, the minister had one. So there must be something central that needs to be sorted out. Thank you. Yeah, I think so. Uh, we can just drop uh, Honorable Kwankwa because when he was not here, we never experienced these problems. Uh, I think <laughs> Chair, I was a fool now, when <laughs> my dear good chief whips the Amrad. Honorable Kwangwa, please save the day for us. <laughs> I, yeah, no, definitely. I'm here today <laughs> for the entire meeting. ESCOM is an issue for South Africa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is there anybody who, uh, I think the, we do have the CEO now. I saw uh, the CEO here. Uh, if he has the presentation with him, but the presentation slide is, is there, he can continue. Uh, apologies, uh, honorable members. Uh, can you hear me now? 
Yeah, yes, we can we hear can. you now. We can. Uh, uh, yeah, let me proceed. Apologies for that lost connectivity. Yeah, um, I think obviously from a cost savings, we, we targeted 20 billion Rand. Um, and, and what we do find is that uh, the pressure from the system comes through in higher usage of open cycle gas turbines and that cost then affects our performance and our liquidity for the year. Year on year, the EBITDA has declined to 32.8 billion. We didn't make an operating profit, but that is then absorbed by your higher, your interest costs. From a balance sheet perspective, I've spoken about the debt. Um, and what we've done, we've raised funding of 18.9 billion during the year. However, municipal debt, uh, uh, th that trajectory and that growth uh, remains a concern uh, with an escalation year on year of 7.3 billion. Next slide. Uh, in terms of operational performance, Uh, yeah, I've touched on that uh, a bit. I'm not going to repeat it. And the people and culture, if we can move on to the next slide. Uh, business separation, uh, honorable members, uh, as we said, from an ESCOM perspective, we continue, we work with the intergovernmental committee. Uh, to meet the requirements of the legal separation of transmission by December 2021 and then generation and distribution by December 2022. There are challenges from a regulatory and a legal perspective. We are working with government to address that. Uh, for example, we, we, we are aware that there are amendments that are currently being undertaken in terms of the Electricity Regulation Act uh, which may impact then on timelines. Go on to the next slide. Um, in terms of the generation performance, uh, as we've said uh, that uh, it remains a challenge, uh, we can see that our load losses uh, have resulted in 47 days of load shedding during the FY21 uh, uh, period uh, compared to 46 days in uh, uh, the previous financial year. Uh, I've touched on open cycle gas turbines with the total cost of 7 billion Rand compared to 7.5 billion the previous year. Um, in terms of the network performance, the system minutes loss um, uh, has, has improved uh, uh, year on year, and we can see that uh, even in terms of distribution, your SIFI uh, interruption frequency index, as well as the SIDI uh, duration index, uh, are positive and trending in the correct direction. However, there remains a challenge, especially on the distribution side around uh, asset vandalism, equipment theft, and overloading of the network which does then increase the breakdowns and maintenance costs uh, and safety is uh, a challenge that we work with on a daily basis. Next slide. Environmental performance, uh, yeah, Kendall, Creole, Latavo, Matla, and Tatuka are all uh, power stations that are not meeting the environmental requirements. We have done a lot of improvements in terms of Kendall, and it has been operating um, since uh, December 2020 within uh, emission limits. Uh, um, but uh, you can see that our coal uh, heat emissions over the last 40 years have decreased. However, our water consumption uh, has deteriorated marginally year on year. During the year, year we had 80 environmental legal contraventions compared to 59 of the previous year. 
with 68 related to water uh, issues. We move on to the next slide. Uh, people and safety, our lost time injury rate has impro uh, improved year on year. Uh, I've spoken uh, about, we've had uh, uh, eight contractor uh, fatalities and two employees to, uh, over the financial year. Um, uh, that is sad and we strive to ensure that there are no f fatalities to uh, ISCOM and contractors. Uh, uh, in terms of our learner pipeline, um, we spend 2.8% of our employee benefits in terms of training activities. Um, and in terms of our staff complement, you can see that that trend has decreased over the years. And year on year, there's been a 5.8% reduction. Uh, well, well, that's, that's to 2026 a 4.5% year on year. We ended the, the financial year with 42,749 staff. Uh, overtime has uh, reduced during the year and we have uh, introduced a production bonus uh, for operating staff, uh, which cost us 129 million, which is self-funded through the savings that I've spoken about earlier on. Thank you. Uh, socioeconomic performance, um, electrification during the year was just under 107,000 connections. Our, our corporate social investment spend of 67.4 million, uh, um, aiding in just under uh, 803,000 beneficiaries during the year. And since uh, inception of the bill program, We've awarded contracts of 227 billion, of which local content was 169.5 billion rand. Um, in terms of pre pre uh, preferential procurement spend, that has reduced to 64.5%, uh, slightly down from 2020 of just under 66%. We can move on to the next slide. That's just breaking down our uh, uh, broad-based uh, Black in economic empowerment. Chair, I'm not going to read all the, the facts on the slide, but you can see that it's significant contributions uh, in terms of the different categories uh, between 2007 and 2021. Thank you. Uh, financial performance. Um, Without repeating myself, I, I think the, the importance is that liquidity and funding um, uh, is a challenge, but uh, it has been supported by the government support of the 56 billion. Obviously our cash from operations during the year was negatively impacted with uh, the pandemic. Uh, however, we uh, managed to deal with uh, our requirements in terms of operational and debt service commitments. Um, net interest uh, bearing debt of 394 billion and our finance charges of 31.5 billion. Uh, uh, it's up uh, due to the higher borrowing costs and less uh, interest being capitalized. Uh, I will touch on more detail in terms of the audit opinion. Um, we had a uh, qualified audit opinion relating to uh, PFMA, uh, in particular the completeness of irregular expenditure and uh, the material uncertainty around our going concern based on our cash flow situation. However, we were able to conclude that ESCOM remains a going concern on the back of the government support. Next slide. Uh, financial performance, as one would expect, uh, with the drop in our EBITDA uh, and our EBITDA margin, um, the operating profit has uh, dropped year on year from 9 billion in 2020 to 5.8 billion in 2021. Uh, and importantly, you can see that uh, 
your cash interest cover, which should be uh, targeted uh, at an acceptable level of two to one is sitting at 0.85 down on the previous year, which means that ESCOM is not generating enough cash to even pay for interest and your debt service co cover ratio, including your capital repayments, um, that uh, ratio should be at least one, uh, which clearly shows that we can't meet our debt service commitments just from the cash from operations. The gross debt to EBITDA ratio is uh, uh, positive on the back of the equity support that has come through uh, during the year, resulting in the gearing percentage dropping from 71 to 67. Next slide. Uh, your income statement. Uh, I can go one back, apologies. Yeah, thanks, Natasha. I think uh, primary energy, um, oh, I'm going too fast. Yeah, thanks. Uh, primary energy, um, I spoke about OCGTs. I think you can see that our employee benefits costs has decreased year on year, keeping that uh, flat uh, over the last few years. Um, and then uh, I think the, the important one is other expenses have grown by 29%. Uh, but if you normalize that for removing once off transactions, that trend year on year is 1.6% increase. Uh, and the reason, uh, one of the contributing factors uh, to the higher op other operating expenditure has been an increase in the decommissioning provision uh, based on the change in discount rates. And we've also, during the year, uh, written off Duva Unit 3, which uh, uh, resulted in an adjustment uh, to the financials. Depreciation was flat year on year. And you can see that your finance costs remained around 31 billion, giving you your 18.9 uh, billion bottom line loss compared to a 20.7 of the previous year. Uh, we did during the financial year recover 1.56 billion from ABB through voluntary disclosure of overpayments relating to Casile. And I've spoken about uh, decommissioning. Uh, year on year, we've seen that uh, positive uh, exchange rate has resulted in benefits in the balance sheet movement, uh, as well as impacts in terms of uh, other financial instruments and embedded derivatives. Move on to the next slide. Uh, I'm not gonna go into detail here, but uh, that's just showing you the drop uh, and the different categories were all affected by the pandemic. Uh, and importantly, that in terms of uh, revenue that we cannot recognize um, because of our ability to collect from consumers. Uh, 6.1 billion uh, in 2021, uh, similar to the previous year of 6.1 billion rand. Next slide. Uh, on the primary energy, uh, all I want to highlight here, over and above the OCGTs, we can see that the IPP uh, costs uh, uh, have uh, increased uh, year on year on the back of, of more volume. Uh, total IPPs at 30.8 billion compared to 28 billion of the previous year. In terms of a rand per megawatt, uh, uh, our cost change that's been reduced by three percent, uh, and in with uh, an improvement in terms of uh, Brent crude and diesel price coming down year on year, we see that that rent per megawatt on diesel has decreased. Overall, um, our coal costs have increased by six percent uh, year on year, and this is the first time in many years that Eskom's coal. Uh, escalation is single digit, whereas normally it trended 
closer to 15% in recent years. Uh, and then the overall impact on primary energy has been um, an increase from 112 billion uh, in 2020 to uh, just under 116 billion grand in 2021. Next slide. From a financial position perspective, uh, um, what you see that um, with uh, us only raising just under 18 billion, under 19 billion of funding during the year, our liquidity position has dropped. However, on the positive side, as you can see, your debt and securities dropped from 483 billion to 401 billion. Uh, and we aim to uh, continue gross finance charges is 45 billion rand. And then after you take out your, your, your capitalized finance costs, you're left with the 31 billion. And you will see that ISCOM's average cost of debt is just under 10%. And the returns we earn on our cash balances are sitting at 3.8% uh, on average. And during the year, you can see that uh, how we were able to uh, reduce uh, the debt securities with a repayment of 65 billion, positive exchange rate movements of 35 billion. And then we raised uh, uh, debt of 16 billion net of commercial paper, leaving us with a closing balance of 401.8 billion grand. Next slide, please. Uh, funding, um, uh, we were able to secure 18.9 billion during the financial year. I think what is important here is uh, uh, on the bottom graph, uh, our debt maturity profile over the next five years uh, reflects on average uh, around 60 billion going forward. Um, uh, and uh, importantly, in FY22, uh, there's 71 billion rand that needs to be repaid. And from a government guarantee utilization perspective, as at the end of July, we had 47 billion rand uh, remaining, obviously subject to each transaction being approved uh, by National Treasury. Thank you. From a cash flow perspective, effectively, uh, honorable members, what we're saying, without the government support that we receive, ISCOM would have not been able to meet uh, its debt service commitments. Uh, and effectively, that gap of 75 billion uh, was covered with uh, the government support uh, of the 56 billion rand. Can move on. Uh, uh, in terms of our municipal debt, uh, as I've indicated, uh, debt trend um, uh, remains a concern. We are working with government to, uh, to address these issues through the political task team and, and the multidisciplinary uh, revenue committee. Uh, and in what we do see that uh, uh, the top 20 defaulting uh, municipalities uh, contribute uh, the majority in terms of that career debt. Uh, we've got uh, 43 active uh, payment agreements in place uh, with only 10 that were fully honored as at the end of March, 2021, uh, which includes uh, 12 of the top 20 of which two have only been fully uh, honored. Uh, in terms of Soweto, uh, that has dropped from the previous year from 12.8 billion to 7.5 billion uh, due to a write-off uh, that we put through during the financial year in terms of in duplum interest. Um, and in terms of uh, other area debts that are outstanding, there are only two large customers with a combined debt of 700 million uh, that's owing uh, to, to ESCOM. Next slide.
uh, capital expenditure uh, as as our build program has come uh, progressing to, towards the end, uh, especially from a Dupi and Kusile, one we can see the trend where capital expenditure peaked at 2017 at 60 billion. Uh, in the last two financial years, it's remained relatively flat at about 24 billion, also taking into account what ESKIM can afford and balancing liquidity with requirements. Um, and as indicated that uh, Madupi, we still need to uh, incur the FGD costs. Move on. In terms of the outlook for March 22, we do see an improvement in our performance. Uh, one with our EBITDA improving, uh, and this was based on the budget of March 22, from just under 33 billion rand to 45 billion. This results in then your operating profit growing to just under 14 billion uh, based on the budget and that positive trend then filters through into your debt service cover ratios, um, including cash interest cover. Um, government support for this financial year, FY22, 31.7 billion Rand has already been received. Uh, and in terms of uh, commitments from government, there's 21.9 billion for FY23 and 21 billion for FY24. And move on to the next slide. Uh, in terms of the audit qualification, I think in particular the PFMA, uh, the disclosure around irregular expenditure uh, and not being able to complete in particular the opening balance uh, correctness uh, due to many transactions going back several years. Um, uh, and we need to improve uh, in terms of our procurement and contract management, as well as consequence management. Um, uh, in, in terms of the corrected material misstatement uh, in, in the audit uh, opinion relating to inventory, I've got a slide on that that I'll talk to, as well as revenue management collection. Next slide. In Irregular expenditure, uh, just to uh, just thank you, Natasha. What you will see there is that uh, this graph shows that uh, uh, if I look at the blue block in terms of your opening balance, thirty six point three billion rand. Prior year cleanup, which continues, uh, uh, that that added nine point five billion rand. Uh, relating to pre-21 uh, transactions. New transactions during the last financial year added 2.2 billion rand. And the breakdown of that is reflected with half of it uh, linked to fuel oil purchases that were deemed not an emergency of 1.2 billion rand uh, in total. Uh, uh, and in the other ones, being a non-compliance uh, in terms of tender process, 380 million and not in accordance with NT instructions, 260 million. What we have done, honorable members, we now have um, a loss control department that has been established and uh, capacitated uh, from April 21. So all transactions now go through them for um, betting uh, as well as to assess uh, appropriateness and what we're doing in terms of irregular expenditure, and then to get condemnations either internally or importantly, uh, externally with National Treasury. Uh, currently, uh, we have received uh, uh, condemnations of 296 uh, transactions uh, valued at 9.6 billion rand from National Treasury. So that has been a positive step during this last financial year. Next slide. Uh, 
Uh, just to add a one or two points in terms of what we're doing on uh, COVAC, please. On irregular expenditure, we've updated our internal policy to align with the legislative prescripts. Um, uh, uh, we have got now a central uh, coordination register that deals with uh, condonations that goes to National Treasury. Uh, and we are working with TPE and National Treasury, importantly, to try to ring fence the historic irregular expenditure uh, to ensure that, that the opening balance uh, issues that we've had that affects your qualification can be resolved and then we focus on current activities. Uh, and from a supplier perspective, ISKIM has a supplier re review committee that has been reestablished. Uh, we've concluded on 63 matters uh, uh, of the 253 uh, issues that have been uh, recommended for, by our assurance and forensic department to review and investigate. Next slide. Uh, chairperson, in terms of revenue management, uh, I, I think all we are highlighting here is that, or oh, this is the inventory one, when we do submit in terms of the requirements to our financials by the 31st of May to National Treasury, ESCOM did indicate in the draft submission that we were still working with the auditors around our inventory uh, uh, balances in sitting in our balance sheet. Uh, and we were only able to conclude that post May uh, 31st. And, uh, and that was the, the opinion that is included in uh, the, the, the auditor's report. Uh, we, we have decided, obviously, this remains a key area in terms of working capital management. And we're looking to then automate that in terms of barcoding uh, RFIDs and doing more regular uh, inventory counts at our respective warehouses to ensure that we don't repeat uh, one, uh, this um, non-compliance issue, and more importantly, which resulted in a write-off of 1.2 billion in the last financial year. Next slide. Chairperson, in terms of revenue management, ESCOM disagreed with the auditor's conclusion that ESCOM is not in control uh, of its uh, revenue management. Uh, I think uh, if you look at our overall payment rates, it's increased year on year, uh, and we are doing a lot to address that recoveries. I'm not going to uh, spend a lot of time on this slide. If we just go to the next slide. Chairperson, uh, this shows that uh, in, uh, in terms of our total overdue debt uh, with regard to the respective different uh, customer segments, uh, and you can see that uh, a number of activities are, are taken by ESCOM to ensure that we do recover what is due to us, uh, uh, where you find percentages over 100% it means that uh, we are also collecting uh, real payments that become due. If you just go on to the next slide, Natasha. Chairperson, uh, if I just focus on, on the bottom table, it just shows the approach we take in terms of our debt and credit management. On average uh, for FY21, 63,000 reminders are sent per month to customers uh, in terms of a first call and in a second call, uh, 40,000 calls per month. Uh, disconnection request, 25,000 uh, disconnection requests uh, every month. Uh, in terms of customers disconnected in the financial year of 2021, 57,000. 
and payment arrangements 1,667. So we do believe as ESCOM, we are doing a lot and you can see that reflected in your uh, payment rates. Thank you. Thank you, you, you done. Yeah, uh, this is just the conclusion. We do see a positive outlook for this financial year. I'm done, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Honorable Mayor. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, is the CEO want to say something before I open for questions? Good morning, Honorable Chair. Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. Apologies for joining late. Uh, I'm sure that um, my colleagues and board members uh, explain the circumstances, so apologies again. Uh, I've got nothing further to add. I think uh, our CFO did a fine job of explaining the financial results. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that is it, uh, honorable members. Now is the time for you to engage the report. Um, I'm having a list of you with me and the, I would like all of you to shoot as much as you can. Uh, I want to start with Honorable Mkwanazi. Honorable Mkwanazi, can you start? Uh, thanks, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, greetings, Honorable Members, uh, Minister, uh, the Board uh, Chairperson, uh, the ESCOM Board Chairperson, and the Management. Uh, Chairperson, let me start by thanking you and the committee uh, for allowing uh, this um, meeting to take place uh, before it's scheduled a, a program because we are really facing a, a, a problem uh, the country and uh, the issue of ESCOM. Really, the experience that we have experienced in the last uh, few weeks, it was very um, inconveniencing, and especially to the thousands of matriculants that are writing their first um, a, a metric exams. Uh, it was really um, a, not a nice experience uh, in the new um, a democratic a South Africa that they are experiencing, including my 18-year-old uh, Zodit as my son. Uh, Chairperson, also the effect and the impact of the load shedding uh, uh, to, to businesses, especially the SMMEs, and to, to individuals, uh, really it's not, uh, it's really an, a not a nice uh, experience uh, to experience. Uh, Chairperson, say, um, uh, in all said and done, uh, we really need to welcome the report as presented by the management of ESCOM. But Chair, firstly for me, um, <clears throat> I would like uh, for the management of ESCOM to go to their audit outcomes, outcome opinion. Uh, if they can share with the committee on the work or action done, done to address the 2019-20 irregular expenditure and they are planning to address the 2020-21 uh, uh, irregular expenditure. Why I'm emphasizing on that, uh, as much as they, 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 they reported on their plan, my worry is uh, it is increasing and I don't see uh, what they, they've presented um, a resulting out of any uh, fruit or any progress uh, going forward. If they can, if they can't uh, talk to that and uh, their plan uh, going forward. Uh, secondly, Chair, uh, in all the, op the, 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 op the, the options uh, presented, uh, especially some were highlighted by the minister in his remarks, uh, is there any plan to reduce uh, the three to four year uh, period, uh, maintenance period that they've, such, they've cited uh, in their report and in the CEO's um, a press conference? Uh, uh, they must report on their eradication of, of backlogs in maintenance, especially because we've just uh, received uh, today uh, in, the, in the news that there is a plan to stage two uh, load shedding, of which uh, it is very uh, inconvenient. And I think uh, as this committee, we need to be taken through and, and to, 
to understand the, prob the, 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 the problems behind it and also to understand the challenges and also to understand the plan uh, going forward. Uh, thirdly, Chair, for me, for the recent uh, load shedding and the current that is happening and the plan going forward, can the ESCOM uh, management uh, share with us the lesson learned, especially on the communication strategy? Because for me, sitting here as an individual and also as a public uh, representative, I think the communication, it's a, it's a, it's a bit la uh, lacking. Uh, to all the stakeholders and to all uh, the individuals and to all the end users to say what is the role of each and every stakeholder to, 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 to work with ESCOM and also to assist uh, ESCOM in the, in the problem of load shedding. And also the communication uh, that is expected from ESCOM, uh, if they can share their strategy so that uh, maybe us as a committee, we can be indicated by them to say, what is it that we can assist uh, to uh, uh, going forward? Uh, fourthly, uh, fifthly, fifthly for me, uh, as you have indicated, when we, we attended uh, the, the oversight, we're a bit um, uh, comfortable from the information that we're, that we're getting. But uh, after we've experienced uh, the load shedding, we're also a bit uh, confused about uh, that information that we, we, we got there. Uh, but uh, if they can relate on the readiness of the power stations that we have with oversight vis-a-vis -vis the load shedding that we're experiencing. But on top of that, can we get the update on the investigation of, on the on Mid, on, on Medubi power station explosion? But also on the flight that we have talked about, Chair, on your remarks, uh, the, the Kusile Ambate uh, uh, flights that we visited uh, during the, uh, the, the oversight. Lastly, Chair, for me, uh, is to the board, uh, Chairperson and the board members. Uh, one of the responsibilities of the board of directors uh, is the strategic direction and the monitoring uh, to the company. If the board uh, chairperson can share with me or us uh, uh, with the committee, your strategic plan uh, you have uh, to address the, the additional capacity that is needed of electricity to meet the demands, uh, to meet the current demands, but also uh, share with us your monitoring plan uh, as the board uh, towards the company for the ESCOM to do things uh, right. And for example, the staff performance, uh, the quality of coal supply to contract to, to different plants and the performance of contractors. Uh, one, uh, uh, some, some of that was highlighted by the minister in his remarks uh, uh, to make, uh, and their plan is the board to make sure that at the end of the day, ESCOM provides a reliable, affordable electricity to all South Africans. Uh, for now, Chair, uh, thank you. That will be my take. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable um, Kwanazi. Now, can we go to Honorable Kachalia? Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you for a very interesting presentation. It made for very interesting reading and a number of questions. Uh, uh, that I have generated come out of it. Uh, in the, a number of these questions can be answered immediately, but in the event of some of these questions requiring data that is not to hand, can we please ensure that those are answered in writing afterwards, please? I will send the full list of the questions onto the secretary of the committee for on sending. Uh, firstly, what is the cost that ESCOM buys diesel from suppliers, not the unit cost averaged, but specifically per supplier, and how much diesel is required to meet peak demand and shortfalls for the coming year. Two, can we have a realistic appraisal of how, as to how reliable and sustainable the repairs that have been affected are? What downtime is envisaged for ongoing maintenance to secure reliability? Thirdly, Please explain to what extent municipalities are not implementing load shedding, who, why, and what is being done about it. 
With regard to headcount, can we have a breakdown of the people in the executive band by job description, salary, and relevant qualifications? Then what will it take in terms of time and cost going forward to ensure the reliability of Madupi and Kusile? Then in terms of the proposed sale of older plants, what criteria is required from prospective buyers to ensure the continued generation at requisite levels? And what steps are being taken to mitigate the inevitable shortfalls as these are being refurbished? Further, since the inception of the new bill program, the local content of contracts has amounted to 169.5 billion rands. Can we have a schedule of the spend? Who, at what cost, and at what rationale? Additionally, in the, in, the in, in the future absence of further government equity contributions, can we have sight of plans to reduce debt and support liquidity? Now, I have a number of questions that refer to slide 15 about the data rationale impact on debt reliability, cost effectiveness and the like. So A, why do we have different time horizons for spend reflected at the, over the period 2017 to 21 and contract values reflected from 07 to 21? Can we have more comparable numbers, please? B, what do you mean by total measurable spend? Surely all spend is measurable. C, what is the difference between local content contracted and local content spend? As the latter is higher than the former, does this mean that we received local content at zero cost? D, we spend 70 billion rands to create 190,000 jobs. One job that is for 1 million spent. Are these durable jobs? Do they stay in business after the work is done for us? Is this high or low efficiency for job creation versus other methods of job creation? E, we create, it says, 11,400 skills, really? So there are more than 10,000 skills we are seeking to develop. What are these skills? What is being counted here? And what are we saying? F, do we have a measure on what would have been saved if we bought all 498 billion from non-BEE compliant suppliers? Also, 235 billion is spent on non-BEE suppliers. Does this mean that if there were no BEE offerings for these supplies, or were these supplies much better? Or, 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 let me start that again. 235 billion is spent on non-BBEE suppliers. Does this mean that there, are no, there were no BEE offerings for these supplies, or were these suppliers much better or offering better value than non-BEE suppliers? H, this is a total this is a one third total of the spend over the previous five years for comparison. What is that ratio? We need a timeline comparison to provide meaning. Then can we have a breakdown of the other two thirds BEE spend in terms of cost, comparative value, durable and sustainable jobs created? And finally, do we have a reference point given the need for prudence and the imperative to keep the lights on of how much additional spend has been incurred to ensure that this BEE spend is indeed BEE compliant. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Kashalia. Uh, Honorable Maotwe. Honorable Maotwe. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Chair, I'm going to focus more on the financial uh, aspect of the presentation. That's what the meeting uh, asked for. So the first one is, what is the comment from the minister with regards to the audit opinion that ESCOM has had uh, five years consecutively? Um, ESCOM has been receiving a qualified opinion for five years now. So what, what opinion, what, what, what is his comment on that? And then the, the, on the issue of material uncertainty, the, the auditors are clear that 
ESCOM incurred losses of about 18.9 million. And then the current liabilities exceed the, the assets by over 19 million. Now, that is an area of concern for me. And I would want to hear from the CFO, what measures do you have in place to better the situation that we find ourselves in? And then in terms of compliance with the legislation, the auditors are saying um, your audit statement, the financial statements that you submitted were not prepared in accordance with the prescribed financial reporting framework. Why is that the, the, the situation? What led to this non-compliance with the legislation? And then in terms of expenditure also, they're saying the effective and appropriate steps were not taken to prevent irregular and full expenditure. So, and this was the case even in the last financial year. So it looks, it looks like there's no, there's no measures that are put in place to make sure that these things, they don't um, um, recur. And there's also irregularities that are mentioned by the auditors as an area of concern when it comes to procurement and contract management. So CFO, CPO, what steps are you taking to ensure that uh, we all reach the compliance that, uh, that we need? And then the last issue for me, Chair, is an update on this irregular and wasteful expenditure that has been kept by ESCOM year and year on. What is the consequence management? Who is being held accountable for this irregular and wasteful expenditure? Because it can be that it keeps being reported and nothing is happening about it. So what is the board actually doing uh, to make sure that the management then carry out the consequence management that is expected uh, to be taken? And then finally, uh, the, the, the issue of load shedding. I mean, no one can shy away from that issue. And I didn't even hear any commitment from the, commitment from the minister when you were speaking earlier on. This is now the third year of this administration. We're still having load shedding. What is the plan? And when are we going to have this issue resolved once and for all? Because we can't keep on saying there's going to be more time needed, more time needed. We don't have time. Industries are failing. Small companies are closing down. Uh, businesses are collapsing because of load shedding. So you are crippling the, 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 the already burdened economy that we have in the country. You're not assisting the economy to grow. So what is ESCOM doing about load shedding? When are we going to have a load shedding as a history in this uh, country? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Mota. Can we go to Honorable Utilis? Hey. Honorable Utilis? Is Honorable Utilis there? Not present. Not present. Okay. Let's go to Honorable Kumed. Chair, can I can I be given an opportunity to respond as I'm going to leave the meeting very soon to the questions that are addressed to me as chair of the board? Okay. Thank you. Chair Chair Chobalada here. Sorry to interject. I noted Mr. Makoba, professor did say that he needs to be out at 12, uh, but I'm not saying you must not prevent him from uh, from responding. Uh, if I can be noted after a comment, I'll really appreciate my network is not really good, but I want to contribute such that he also notes what one has to say. Thank you. I'm fine. Okay, I've noted that. I will ask Honorable Kumed and then Kwankwa, and then you come, Honorable Shabalala, and then we give it to the professor. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Honorable Kumed. Chair, thank you very much. Uh, 